Welcome back. You know, one of the um, my objectives in doing this thing is what all of your objectives probably are. One of your object, all one of the objectives of each one of you probably is, and that is to demystify painting. And um, the last thing we need is to make this thing mysterious. And we're trying to actually be producers of of of, of good results along the lines of good painting that we as we know it. So. Um, uh, I remember I was reading, um, maybe it was something like The Art Spirit by Robert Henry, and uh, it may have been in that book where I had that reaction, like this is this is making it more, even more mystical and mysterious and in, in undoable. And I thought, I, got, I, just, I just remember taking the approach of mentally, at least, throwing the book across the room, <laughs> saying, I'm done with this book. I must have been halfway through the book. Um, I think that was one of my first experiences with even reading books. Uh, I found much better books when I, um, when I got to Gamble. Um, but um, but uh, Billy Mack, new to us, I think. Billy, are you relatively new to us? I uh, don't think you've asked a question before. Um, so I like it, he says, when a painter suggests why there are effects beyond just showing the effects. So I don't know if you mean when a painter verbally suggests why there are effects beyond just showing the effects. All effects must have a cause or else they wouldn't be effects. Um, why is light a cause of a shadow? The how is learned much easier than the why. Effects beyond those which light produce, like motion and mass and facial gestures too, as in, say, the Mona Lisa by da Vinci, sometimes make mysterious both the how and the why. But for now, uh, oftentimes measuring lines counts for getting the right effects of perspective and composition. Plato calls the art of measuring mensuration, in which one, uh, in one disputed dialogue, though he was speaking of sculpture, I believe. Uh, so, yeah, let's, this is, this is going to need a little tiny bit of unpacking, and uh, I say unpacking, maybe even more, uh, 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 what shall we call it? Um, but um, I want to I think of this with you point by point, for example, when, and then I'll tell you pictures to, to go with it, but, I like it when a painter suggests why there are effects. I remember Gamble, working with Gamble, and he would be teaching, as he said, deductively. You had to figure out why. He would just tell you what. You just did what he said, right? I, now, that's probably a very crude interpretation of what he meant by that idea of teaching deductively. All effects must have a cause, or else they wouldn't be effects, is the next point, right? Uh, now, um, that's, a, that's, a, that's well said. Um, and when we talk about light effects, of course, we're talking about what produces them. We're talking about the values, the contrast, plus edge, in some cases plus intensity, in other cases plus also a, a movement of, of value that, and, and the way it gets cut off, uh, uh, whether it's on the decline or on the upswing, et cetera, things like that. Yes, those are causes of that effect that you're seeing in front of you. And so what we can paint, that's what the value of this is, what we can paint is we can make our values darker, lighter, or, or, or more so as they exist side by side. And we can sharpen edges and, and so on. Some of this has to do with sizes, um, um, much, right? Why is the light the cause of a shadow? How, the how is learned much easier than the why. Now, that's a one I'd probably dispute. I have <laughs> I found that it, uh, for most of the students I work with, the how, uh, they say, all you have to do is make it, you know, the, what, did, what did DeCamp say, uh, uh, the right color, the right value in the right place. That sounds easy. And then he says, hard to, easy to understand, hard to do. The how is learned easier than the why. I don't think so. I think it's much easier. There's so many people explaining why, you know, why the light does what it does and stuff. Huge parts of it are kind of useless to us, too. Uh, like, who do, what do we know about the sort of number of decibels or... or um, Things like lumens, which is our word in the light, and decibels is a sound thing. But um, yeah, so I, I'd rather dispute that, uh, uh, Billy. But uh, maybe you're making a point in a different, uh, making a point in a way that could be elaborated on. Effects beyond those which light produce, like motion and mass. Now that's illusions, right? The illusion of motion. Uh, motion. We don't do motion. Our pictures are still. They're fixed. So if you're talking about the effect of motion, the, the sensation that something is that the that there's something in motion about the painting, that's a modern idea. And um, and by the way, that doesn't mean that 
we aren't attempting to get what we call the life, um, and which is totally an illusion, right? Um, we are trying to get that sense of life, but only to the degree that it, that it appears on the canvas by the organization of the sense data, right? The darks, the lights, and so on. But um, but yes, and you and you can see that uh, like early Greek work is much stiffer than later. That's uh, that feeling is that it's fixed. Like it does actually feel more like their method was was faulty. Uh, for example, making a guy stand still for hours and hours and hours and hours until he got to be really clunky looking, and they were taking these measures, you know, on this guy that had no life in him. And uh, so you know that some of what ha produces that. Like in uh, when you you know is 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 done through memory through the use of memory, but it's not memory of motion in the abstract. Although it could be. I mean, in other words, you could be trying to make your shapes better and better to suggest a motion you saw. But it also might simply be the use use of the memory with a guy holding a pose. That's an in motion sense, as I've shown you in some of my memory uh, stuff. And Gamble himself was doing. You know, having a person take a pose that they couldn't stay in, but he was trying to memorizing the, memorize the lines. We do that with animals too, uh, where you try to um, to to learn the animal, but you have to be painting a piece of a leg in motion, so to speak. So you have to hold it in your eye for that brief second. Um, uh, nevertheless, it's still uh, the right angles, the right shapes, and all those sorts of things that make that up. Uh, as I said, I'm. If anything, here to 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 run to 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 eliminate the mysteries, right? And uh, I think any teacher you're looking at ought to be not telling you you're you're, you're some god that's that's going to produce mysteries out of your head. Uh, everything is everything is something. Else. Everything is more physical than that, more or doable, shall we say? Uh, and not to say, by the way, that the things that we do, all of them require the use of the mind in that way, in that visionary kind of way, if you want to put it that way, even to understand just what a shape is doing in front of you. Uh, so don't don't mistake that. But uh, when you get down to this question of the facial gestures, that's when you're starting to talk sergeant's language. Remember that comment when they say, um, when um, somebody said to him, I, you really grasped or captured the personality of this person. And he said, well, I was just trying to get the shapes right. Something to that effect. You've heard me badly paraphrase that before, but I remember that distinctly. You know, in my in my imagination, knowing he was not kidding around. Uh, although you can say he's trying to give, he's sort of providing a sort of a debunk moment. But all painters will do that. They'll, you know, they'll try to get the the museum curator and all those guys, <laughs> all the all the mystery writers. You know, the, uh, the the critics to stop saying the kinds of things that you're not doing. Right. Uh, so uh, facial gestures, well, facial expression I th assumes what you mean, the gesture, obviously the tilt of the head and all those sorts of things. Those are all literally angle based and they're observation based. Uh, and, and now if you're painting one out of your head, you're still observing your canvas and a very important point. You're still observing your canvas. So you're making these adjustments, watching to see if the shapes you're making are giving you the tilt you want or producing the expression you want that you have in your mind and at some point you'll say that'll do right but it'll all be created by the movement of values and uh, locations you know what i mean uh, that sort of thing and and, and edge edges and not you know angles and whatever so um so sometimes make mysterious the um the uh, both the how and the why yeah, and I do recommend you don't read those kinds of books that create mysteries, uh, unaccountable mysteries. There's no mystery in painting in that way. Um, you could say it's a mystery until you understand it, uh, much like magic is a mystery until you understand, you know, there's actually literally a one, two, three, first you do this and then you do that. And uh, and you trick people uh, into thinking certain things and all that sort of stuff. But <laughs> but it's very physical. Every, anybody can do this. Some people will do it way better than others who put the most time practicing, for example. But for the how, oftentimes measuring lines counts for getting the right effect of perspective and composition. Absolutely. The how, and so so you're, you sense what the composition is doing or whatever the perspective is doing, and you get the angles right. And that's why this conversation goes on about perspective, is if you can get angles right to vertical, in the abstract, I mean, just to vertical, if you get them right to vertical, you will have, and you get them all right, you'll have the perspective of the painting, of the whatever it is you're looking at. 
or the size relationships between objects and their elevation on the landscape and so on. Uh, but that very practical stuff is what you need to keep in mind. Um, Plato calls the art of measuring mensuration in one disputed dialogue, though he was speaking of script, sculpture, I believe. Um, mensuration, measuring, this other where you have me talking about uh, gamel uh, from time to time and saying at one point I was so, so frustrated with sight size. And this way that these the guys around me had shown me how to use uh, some some of these odd techniques, transferring angles and that sort of thing, uh, uh, that was so far from the relational art that I'd already learned. You know, the idea of this to this and that to that, the relationships of things, that it freed my eyes. Um, well, yeah. So I said to Gamble at one point, as I've quoted you before, I said, uh, you know, when does this measuring stuff start? Gamble said, the cure for measuring is more measuring. And he was right. He was absolutely right. But it doesn't. It isn't sight size. It's not the cure for sight size. Isn't more sight size. <laughs> the cure. The the way you get your your likeness is by using observing more relationships. For example, the little dark in the corner of the mouth. You know, observe it in relation to the chin, and then something else you can read the forehead line. You observe it in relation to the ears. Observe it in relation to other things that look like it. And that, that form of relational observation, which I think is the right word for mensuration, I like the word mensuration, if you mean that, um, is absolutely a crucial must, right? And so everything about the expression is a product of that measuring, right? So that's actually the demystifying of this whole thing. Um, it's always irritated me in modern times, the, uh, and I think possibly the difference between Rodin and other sculptors is that these guys would have a model stand still and then they would measure it uh, to a vertical thing. They'd just do measurements and transfer them all over to the cast, to the, to the sculpture. I assume that, uh, that uh, Rodin learned that way as well, but I get the feeling, I assume that because of training that was around. But I do assume that he also, he switched to something else uh, which gave him much more sense of the life via the, the, the observed relationships. And as we know, he, um, you know, he, it was said by Tarbell that if he painted, he would have been one of us, meaning one of the, one of the Boston School guys. That all is suggested by that, rather than a... Uh, I keep remembering, by the way, when I pick on sight size and stuff, that I got the pers I, don't, I have no other perception than that everything about sight size that Gamble picked up either invented Apart from the idea of sight size, I mean the placement on the floor where you're, whatever you're drawing appears to be the same size, but any other methodology is either invented via Paxton or by himself. Um, the Boston School is different. But let's look at pictures anyway. I, I'm getting into the weeds here. Um, the, uh, but all we're going to talk about is expression. Uh, the faces, as I said, uh, Sargent's idea is um, let's get those values, colors in the right place, and we'll have the expression. So even if you're doing a head, uh, Da Vinci on the left, uh, Degas on the right, even if you're doing a head uh, uh, somewhat, this is historically supposedly done by over many, many years out of his imagination based on something. I don't know, if some drawings, I guess, and, uh, and, then, and then evolved from his own mind. But it wouldn't make any difference how you're doing it. If you have a concept or if you're looking for a certain expression, even if it's an imaginative head, you actually can only move, all you can do to get it is to move darks around. You can move this eye higher or lower, make it smaller, further away. Uh, not, not just because it's an eye, but you're just talking about movement of values, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, it's just the relationships of elements in this thing that produce that sensation of an expression. As I said, what your job is, is to, as you're doing these sorts of things, and make yourself do an invented head, and sit there and just try to make it have a particular expression and notice what you're going to have to do. All you can do is do it with the physical stuff in front of you. Darks and lights, value transitions, locations, it's all we got. But you have to have an idea of the expression. And so when you're, even if you're painting from life, like the Degas here, Degas has, has, has a sense of this person. Uh, that's say he's, he's, he's rather learned the expression of this person. And, uh, and, uh, but he's done it, and, and you'll see him be, being very disciplined by getting the, the right colors and values in the right place, et cetera. And that's the same of, as, um, and by the way, look at the wild difference between these two expressions. One of the things about expression is you can't tell what the heck people are thinking. You get a sensation from it, 
and you can see differences even in personality in the in the in these interpretations in these um, in these drawings. Uh, but the sitter, typically on the, particularly in the in the impressionist mind, is always is sitting there, and you're actually trying to articulate what you see, trying to draw forth that person's actual uh, character or whatever it is. And uh, the only means you have is to is to chase, adjust the uh, the values and the locations and the um, and the edges and all those sorts of things, the form. So, I yeah, I'm hoping I'm demystifying this, but not taking out the obvious, right? You do every. All these guys are producing good expressions that are that are very viable as as you know to the extent that they create personality and all that sort of stuff. But look at how each one of these has a different kind of an expression. Um, you get the sense that um, that uh, uh, De Camp is actually seeing a person and trying and and express and and do and getting the values of a person who is either in a state of of. Um, of uh, uh, what would you call it? Of um, I don't know, maybe a certain kind of an angst, but you can see a certain kind of a mindset and all that sort of stuff. He's got a person in that state, and he's by by getting the values in the right places, he's capturing that. It's the capturing of the relationships that gives him that, that delivers that. However, it's not going to be a refined version of that. That says he's, he's going to be keep watching it so and making sure that the relationships really do reproduce. That sense of personality, he can't mystify and make it up. He just has to keep on adjusting things, wondering if that'll help, and then watching his canvas to see if it's actually bringing him closer. In each case, when a painter, a painter is making a picture, a portrait, it's a proximity thing. You're only getting closer to this larger idea that you're seeing in front of you, the personality or whatever else you want to call it. You're getting close enough to the likeness in the physical way, and then uh, also in the noticing whether or not it contains uh, an element of that that you know personality that's expressed via those things as you look at the model. This is starting to sound really mysterious. I don't. I'm, I'm, that's exactly not what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Much like any of this stuff, you see the lost areas and uh, and more found and more and you see these. They, that's what he's doing. He's drawing shapes, putting them in the right place, getting the color relations right. <laughs> That's what we do. So if we can t not demystify it, not mystify it so much. And it's even just as true here. Our game is the relationships, right? So he spends all of his time uh, getting this color value right while he's aware of this one and while he's aware of this one. And he does it by way of sets that seem similar, like he's looking at a pink and he may be aware of what this pink is doing as a, as a dark version of that or what this one's doing as a warmed up version of that or whatever. But these are everything he's doing here is mensuration. There's not one thing he's doing that isn't measured. He isn't he isn't working out of his imagination in that he's not making this stuff up. Um, he, as I said, he's he's doing that as I've said many times before. We know that he's working with that innocent eye, that naive eye, and um, and just and just uh, getting this to this and that to that, and watching again. I say watching for the, for the magic. So that's the thing. We are we are painting magic, but it's just the magic as an impressionist. It's just the magic that you see in front of you. Uh, if you're an imaginative painter, it's a magic that you've made up, that you're perceiving, and you're you're going to get some proximal uh, level of it by staying with that vision of that, and then just making adjustments of values and all that sort of thing. But in our case here, it's just this to this and that to that. Well, you know what color value is? What's this to this? What's that to that to, to a note like this? That's what we've got. That's what we do. But we have this other thing that we're doing, which is, if you want to call it the mystery, is that we keep watching. We have a vision of this thing based on what we literally see in front of us. And of course, what we've, what we've engaged, you know what I mean, emotionally engaged, that we like, in other words. And we're trying to, to watch that into existence, adjust effects, adjust effects, till they begin to do, like creating light effects, to do those things that are giving us that magic that's in that that's in that um, impression so yeah have I answered that at all I don't know uh, but in any case that's my that's one shot at it um, yeah, I can come at this again this has been a brief one um, I'll go let me go back and just look at the question again see if there's anything I haven't said that I might have I like when a painter suggests why there are effects beyond just showing the effects so 
Yeah, I don't know what that means in terms of a painting, but I do understand that uh, when you're teaching, I understand somewhat what that means. Um, I mean, you can say, you know, the reason this 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 dark this part of my uh, knuckle is dark is because because there's a bone protrudes there, and the and and a shadow is cast off of it, and that's why it. Um, I'm, I said I said it wrong, but that's. That's what causes it to have its unique bony mark in the fact that the shadow line is curving there, if that's a shadow line, and and doing something different somewhere else, isolating it as, you know, as et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, but do you really want to have that explanation? You know, it's a really kind of a big question. Do you need that explanation? I suggest you don't. And in fact, I think it's what sucks you into uh, missing the impressionist message, which is stop trying to know so much about the whys and the whats and, ju and, and just notice what it is as paint, what it is as values, those whats and what their relationship is. And you will have all the effects and in fact you'll have the magic of, the, of what's happening in front of you if, you're, if, you, if, you, if you submit to doing it with, with, with um, uh, what shall we say, w w with, with a servant mind, you know, with a kind of a concept of I'm going to make this thing uh, 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 truly like this time, you know, the Tarbell mindset <clears throat> and the relationships, of course. So, yeah, so the how is learned much easier than the why. Effects, I, again, I've disputed that, effects beyond those which light produce, like motion and mass, and facial gesture too, as in, say, the Mona Lisa by Da Vinci, sometimes make mysterious both the how and the why. Um, yeah, you do have to watch it when you're reading stuff because the mystification of all this stuff is a killer. And it is what's keeping you. It's a significant block to, to actually enabling you to make things that we think of as being evanescent, for example, the expression, that sort of fleeting expression on a person's face. You can't make it except by having a vision of it in your eye, having seen it, and then organizing the relationships on the, on the, on the, on the, on the uh, main, you know, on the, on the uh, person's... Uh, on the person's um, facade <laughs> face, but for for the for the how, oftentimes measuring line counts for getting the right effects of perspective and proportion. Um, yeah, so that, but everything is about the, for us the how is simply this to this and that to that. Like, it doesn't get much simpler than that. But there's a great mind involved in the observer, you know, who's actually saying that's a fascinating, fascinating thing this thing is doing. I wonder if I can manage the relationships of the parts to make it do that. And that's where you become the instrument of beauty or the instrument of a positive response of a, uh, uh, what you might call now mystery, but I don't think that's uh, as good a word as, as beauty, you know. Um, and that's where I'll get in trouble. Okay. All right, Billy, thank you for that. Uh, but that sort of gets other thoughts going in, other people, in, in all of your minds. Um, uh, keep on remembering that, you know, I speak for myself in terms of that being at my own point of development and all the understanding of all these things. And uh, as I've said to you, I've sort of lived the life of an impressionist trying to just make truth in front of me with more authority and with all of its great qualities. So that's where I put my energies and that's why I talk this way. Okay, very good. Um, so let's, uh, let's plan to see you all in the next one, and I hope you have a great um, week of work. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't say it. Don't forget, don't forget to subscribe, share, comment, um, uh, like, anything. Do get, get it all going. Uh, do, uh, I've, been, I've been not very good about it. If anybody's relying on me uh, on that at least that Jill sends out. I've not been, been very good there. I apologize for that. But um, sometimes I'm getting you three at a time or something um, because I forget to do them for several weeks. So don't rely on that too much. And the same similar thing happens with the uh, Facebook stuff. So or whatever. So um, best thing to do is subscribe. And uh, and I appreciate all your sharing. I appreciate all the wonderful comments I've had the last few weeks. Uh, it's much appreciated. And I am looking forward to this this every time we get around uh, as we did to the um, to the uh, uh, live ones to really meeting you guys um, um, hearing your your sort of your live reactions and comments and so on um, so all right hopefully that'll be in six or eight weeks again all right talk to you later